Hey everybody, it's Rachel with Dye Press. Today I want to show you how to use Dye Press Polygloss for hard substrates. It works on glass, ceramic, wood. This is whiteboard MDF from Home Depot. It also works on metal. And it also works on what I consider to be soft substrates like paper, cardboard, linen, burlap, and canvas. Okay, let's get started. So what we want to do is take your polygloss, we're going to start with just one ounce. One ounce is going to go a long ways. You'll get a little measuring cup in your package. So you pour in one ounce of polygloss, which is just about filled to the brim there. And then we're going to put in one milliliter of catalyst. And you'll notice this is a three milliliter syringe, so we're only going up to the one milliliter mark. So one milliliter per ounce of polygloss. Put that in there. Stir that up. Okay, now while that sits, what we want to do is get our brushes ready. One of the tips I have for getting a smooth finish is actually to cut your brush. I buy these brushes, they're not too expensive, they're at less than $3 from Walmart. You get three in a pack. And they're nice brushes, but they have a real kind of a rough edge. And this rough edge actually creates more uh, bubbles and just a rough surface. So what, I, what you want to do is give this brush a haircut. So what you're going to do is get it wet and then you pull all the fibers together and you're just going to hold them up and you're going to cut straight across. This one's already been cut so I'm going to go ahead and start applying the polygloss with this brush. Okay so before I apply the polygloss I want to talk about a challenge with applying water-based coatings like polygloss. Um, if you live in a dry climate like we do here in Arizona, your coating is going to dry too fast and those bubbles will not have had a chance to pop and the coating will not be smooth. So we've discovered a trick that if you live in a dry climate and the bubbles aren't popping, your coating is really bumpy, what you can do is slow down the drying process by using a Tupperware tent. So when you lay out the coating, you cover it, the wet coating, for 10 minutes. In just 10 minutes, those bubbles will pop and settle out. After 10 minutes, you can lift off the Tupperware tent and let it sit and dry the rest of the way. Okay, well, let's start painting. So you really only need a small amount of polygloss, about the size of a nickel to a quarter. What you're gonna do is quickly just bring the coating all the way across just randomly, making sure it's all covered so it doesn't start to dry in one spot. And you're gonna get down kind of at eye level here and we're watching to see that we got an even coat. I'm barely touching the surface. There are bubbles everywhere and that's totally normal. So I look down and I say, okay, yep, that's covered. So now I'm gonna, you're not gonna worry about the bubbles or anything else because it's all gonna level out as long as it's totally coated and there aren't huge puddles on it. So now I'm gonna cover it for 10 minutes and that's good to go. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna just check here down at an angle. All right, looks like the bubbles have popped, so I'm just gonna set this aside because you really only want to cover for 10 minutes. You need to get it start drying for real. Uh, now we're gonna let it sit for an hour to two hours, depending on your climate, until it's totally dry. Okay, so now the coating is totally dry, it's nice and hard. I'm gonna go ahead and cure it in this convection oven. I've already set it, turned it on, so it's already heated up pretty good. Um, setting it at 300 degrees for 22 minutes because it's on the turbo setting, which is the same as convection setting, which heats up faster than a standard oven. If you are curing yours in a regular kitchen oven, you'll need to be at 340 degrees. It's only 300 degrees if it's a convection oven because it heats up so fast. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And I'm gonna set my timer for 22 minutes. Okay, while we're waiting for the tile to cure, let's talk about printers. For so many years, I struggled with clogged lines, clogged print heads, unrecognized cartridge errors, and just overall frustration with, with sublimation printing. But then, Epson introduced a line of EcoTank printers like this one, and they have made sublimation fun again. It's simple, reliable, and inexpensive. All right, let's look under the hood and see how we fill this thing. So this, this EcoTank is, is a little trickier to fill, so that's why I chose it to demonstrate to you how to do it. So each of these tanks, you can see they're all empty right now. You're gonna lift up this tab and that opens up a little orifice in the top. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna get, uh, now like we sell our ink with a syringe and with a blunt tip needle so that you can fill it. So you're gonna stick the syringe in there, pull the ink out, 
And then what you're going to do is just stick it right in this tiny little orifice here. It's only going to go down maybe a oh, quarter of an inch or so and just kind of rest there and you just fill it up from there and you'll start seeing the ink fill right up. It's actually pretty easy. Let's talk about paper before we do some printing. I struggled with multiple different types of paper. I've tested many high release papers and I continue to have problems with roller marks, sticky paper residue and ink bleed and even ink fading because these high release papers like this A sub, they push the ink off the page prematurely. They don't soak up enough ink. So because they're not soaking up enough ink, you're going to get roller marks. And because they push the ink off the page prematurely, you'll get ink bleed. And also you can have ink fading over time because you think the image is there, but the ink is just resting on the surface. So I decided I had enough of sublimation paper and I started testing regular multi-purpose paper, not copy paper because copy paper doesn't release as much ink, but regular multi-purpose paper. Right here we have uh, different papers that I've tested. I've tested Hammer Mill, Georgia Pacific, and today I'm actually using the Staples multi-purpose paper. The key words for this multi-purpose paper that you're looking for are that it needs to be inkjet laser paper because it releases just the, the right amount of ink. This one today we're using is just a 20 pound paper and actually works pretty well. The only thing is, is you may need to use extra blowout paper so that the ink doesn't blow out the backside of the page. And also this one is 96 bright. That's as bright as you wanna go. If you go any brighter, like 97 or on up, it's actually going to have a coating on the paper that's going to interfere with the, with the sublimation process. So Staples, this is the way to go. It's pretty cheap and you'll see what, what, how it turns out in just a second. Okay, so let's talk about, there's two different ways to, to sublimate a tile. Uh, one is face up and one is face down. Now this tile here, you could sublimate face up because it doesn't need to go wrap around the edges. Whereas this one's gonna need to be sublimated face down so you can get the, the full print all the way along the edge. So let me just demonstrate how you would put that on the uh, press. You can put it over foam. This actually has worked out really well. This is actually from, it's a Cricut product and it's available um, at Michael's. I love that I can get things locally, that really helps. So I'm gonna use my blowout paper. I'm using two sheets because this sublimation paper we're using, which is actually multi-purpose paper, is kind of thin. So I don't want it to stain anything if the ink passes through the back of the image. So you would lay your blowout paper on the bottom, and in this case you would be laying your image down and your tile down, and you would also need to put the silicone mat on top because these tiles from Home Depot have a gap right here, and you need to make sure that the heat is transferred all the way down into every little nook and cranny, and that's what this does. This transfers heat and pressure all together, so you would lay that on there, and then you would clamp it down with good firm pressure you would do 400 degrees for 10 minutes. And that's how you're gonna get a full bleed image. Okay, now this tile, since the design is simple, I guess I call it that, it doesn't go all the way to the edge, we can do this one face up. So I'm gonna show you how to lay that out. So I'm gonna position it on the tile here and put it on the press. I'm gonna do the two sheets of blowout paper on top. And then I'm going to use the silicone mat because we do need to have the heat and pressure because these tiles are not completely flat. Um, so you need to make sure that it, it gets down in the lower spots and that's what the silicone mat is for. And also I just wanna to mention too that this silicone mat here came from Amazon. It was maybe $10 at the most from Amazon. I actually cut it down, it was bigger. Um, you can also get, this is another type of silicone mat you need to make sure they're completely smooth. This one's from Michaels and it, uh, it's actually called a macaroon mat. And it is available in like the specialty baking section. So then we're gonna close this up. We're gonna do 400 degrees for five minutes. One last tip before we close up shop today. If you don't like the high gloss finish, you can always apply a top coat of matte clear, like this is a Rust-Oleum two times matte clear from Walmart, it's about $3. 
I applied one coat um, over the image. It originally looked like this, and then with the top coat of the matte finish, it now has a really soft, satiny finish. It's great. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe below. You can also check out our full line of sublimation coatings at diepress.com. And be sure to join our Facebook group. You can just search for Dye Sublimation and uh, join, the, join the community of sublimators and they can help you out.